one of my good friends now. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is, uh, you know, our race car, our SCCA race car. Uh, you know, we got a couple of really great guys going out and uh, ripping it up and going against some pretty tough competition. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna be out there with the Vipers and BMWs. You'll be out there, and so we're pretty excited about uh, getting Cadillac back in racing. Could you, can you imagine well, Cadillac back in look, racing? It, it's great to hear that. Yeah. It really is because to me, competition improves the breed oh. and. Competition is racing. So, so that's one of the things that's different. I, you know, I go to these meetings and people are saying, we want to win in this category. We don't want to finish second. We want to engineer it to win and win with margin. And that's true of this car right here. I mean, this is something that, you know, God bless Bob Lutz and, and everything he did, because he gave us something to market, something that we could build off and really re-energize this brand. And in the car like this is really part of it, the CTS-V sedan, the CTS-V uh, uh, sports wagon, a real, fun car if you've never been in one you really oh no i've been in it i absolutely car. have and so, a real styling statement no too. kidding no kidding and i think you know um you know i talk to mr lutz all the time and he's been very helpful to me and it but these are some of the legacy things he he, he gave this company and, he really did and he really really helped us in fact we just had him on after hours uh last thursday and it was a great conversation <laughs> we got one email from uh, a viewer who said you know i feel like i'm listening to moses <laughs> <laughs> yes sir I mean, I, 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 uh, we just hired Chris Perry, yeah. um, who uh, came from Hyundai with me and joined. Right. And uh, one of the things I did is about a month ago or so, I took him over to Bob. And so we just sit on his couch and talk. Have you, have you seen uh, our Camaro thing? Has anybody shown you? No, 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 no. This? It's really fun. Well, what is this with the Hot Wheels? Hey, somebody's got to demonstrate this for me. Somebody get in there and demonstrate this for him. Because, hey, that will be you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> But you guys, what we've done is it's it's uh, a lot like what they do in Matrix. You know how they have that scene in Matrix, and and they they show the guy bending backwards and he's dodging the bullets. This is the same kind of technology. And basically, what you do is you jump, and then it takes your picture as it goes around and all these, and then you can email it to anywhere in the world and show the new Camaro, and you can show you jumping in front of it, and you can see it. Are you gonna do it? Jump for them. Somebody jump. <laughs> there he goes. Thank you. And you know what? When we did this, we did this first time in LA. Uh, I think we did sixty thousand. Oh my gosh! It was some unbelievable number that we broke the machine. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was like people were still getting their emails, you know, months later. So yeah, what, watch what he does here. He gets in there. Don't take too long, guys. Hurry up, set up, and jump. <laughs> <laughs> we had a line in LA where we're doing this. Oh, you'll have a line here. I'm sure. our, uh, I don't know if you've noticed our new display. Uh, we went to a lot of trouble to try to get uh, this display so it would be a fundamentally different than where we were. More fun to be in. More fun to be it's in. It's not just cars on a carpet. Yeah, you notice the Connect. So you got the Xbox Connect stations upstairs, downstairs. It allows people to play the new cruise game and, and then try it out with, with our good pre pre uh, partners at Xbox. And so, here you go, watch, ready? No, watch, ready, and what he does? Yeah. Now, when you see the picture, what's funny is they can take it, they take the picture and it rotates down and it looks like you're jumping at all different angles. Oh, and man. They email it to the, all around the world and we capture their email addresses. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can later market to them. Isn't that funny how that works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a method to your madness. We have a Camaro question. Okay. Oh, we have a question. Yeah, Jay Cujo says, will we see more commercials for the Camaro slash Corvette in the near future? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> we think that the Camaro and the Corvette are a big part of what Chevrolet stands for. Um, we're going to be in the Super Bowl. I know you know this. We're yeah. going to have a lot going on the Super Bowl. And you may see if, you know, what's what's funny is we produce a lot of commercials for the Super Bowl and then we pick the best ones and we're in the process still of doing it. That's right going to be a fun job, you know, picking the best one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's also very stressful. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but right now, well, Camaro Spot is in the uh, in, in the upper ranks and then oh, you might win. So you oh, might see something in the Super Bowl. Here, there's a little hint. You there, heard it here yeah, first. Yeah, you heard it here first. <laughs> hey, let's walk to the very sure. front. Oh, no, there's a whole there's a whole scrum Have going on the there. Connects? Have you no, no, connects? show us that. Show us that. So there, there's perfect. Somebody's actually doing it. So here's Connects playing the game. Um, she's in a, if you notice, she's in a Volt and she's in a cruise. And you can actually drive it. Look at the, it's It sees through the camera here your hands and, and all your actions and tells it what to do without without having any kind of controllers in there. And we're happy because it would, you know, we're one of the first to uh, have a game for Connects. Uh, we're on Xbox right now. If you, if you, I don't know if you're a big Xbox guy, I, in my family we are. 
and we have ads on there uh, right now, and so you can get cruise ads. So you go there, you see this, and then you can dial in the cruise, you can put your information in and get more information about the cruise. So it's a great integration for us, and it's one way for us to get both the Bolt and the cruise out. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, like 20 million people have Xbox. I had no played idea on, it's it that played, many. It played on a regular basis. Oh my gosh. And it's, you know what's funny, it's not just gamers. Um, we end up watching Netflix on ours at our house. And it's like, so you can, you can use it for watching television and shows, you can play family games, or you can get in and, and do stuff like this. So, so you're really doing a lot of things differently from a sales and mar or yeah. marketing and advertising standpoint. Absolutely, but we're just starting, right? I mean, this is the first year, the new displays, you can see we're trying to- Yeah, you've only been the at the company, what, half a year? Yeah, yeah, so we're doing the best we can to, to kind of spruce these up. And I think in the coming years, you're gonna see us do a lot more. I mean, we're gonna start doing more with all these displays, make them more interactive, make them more entertaining and informative at the same time. So, and when, you know, I've been going to shows since I was a kid and this is fun, right? You, you take home memories. I could tell you things that I did when I was 12 in an auto show in LA and I remember those things. So that's, we want to create memories and experiences that people take home with them. And there's a number of people who come here shopping, right? So we want to make sure that we have our best foot forward so they can see the cars we have. What else, what else have you got going on uh, here? Let's see. Uh, we got the truck of the year. Have you heard that? I don't know if I told you that. No. Maybe. Oh, yes. No. We won truck of the year in the heavy duty segment. Do you, have you ever heard of Max and Al? <laughs> <laughs> I got to bring Max and Al when we do our thing. Your yeah, you're going to have to do that. It was a lot of fun. But uh, the heavy duty truck, uh, Motor Trend gave us the, uh, the truck of the year award. Um, and we're very proud of that. And you know what's interesting? That's only happened once before where Motor Trend has given the Truck of the Year Award and the Car Award at the same time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so so you got it for the Volt, too, as Volt, you mentioned, and, and now it, the heavy uh, duty We were very pleased because this was a dogfight. I mean, the, the Ford is a very good product, and you know, we were, it was a dogfight, and we're very happy to have brought that home. And it also, again, is a testament to uh, the engineers and the guys that worked on this car because think about it, we get the Truck of the Year Award and we get the Volt Award. What does that tell you about the engineering that's going on in this company? Right. So with, what if, whatever problems we may have been having at the time, we could always rely on the guys making the great product and that's what we need. You know what? Any kind of sustained rebound from the issues that we've been through starts with product first and thank goodness we have it. We got this beautiful Camaro that we just launched at the LA Auto Show. Um, I know, love the color. Yeah, it's going to be the MB award for the Super Bowl um, you know a lot of people are taking bets on who that's gonna be who gets it um, but that's a great car for that who's your bet who's your bet for the MVP oh gosh this goes out live I can't say that oh did I say Tom Brady <laughs> I didn't I mean I'm sorry <laughs> I didn't say Tom Brady today, no. but I think it's Tom Brady we you know the ZR1 continues to be what is uh, by many people the the finest uh, performance car in the uh, in the industry you know, it's a, a phenomenal performing car. Did We started to do really well at the end of the ALMLS series last year. We won the Petit Le Mans, we're very happy with that. Um, and then, you know, everything for us is about the cruise this coming year. And we need to do well. That's a segment we haven't traditionally done well in, and that's a segment we have to do, and we have to spend the resources necessary to be successful there. We're up against Toyota, Ford, Honda, you know, uh, Hyundai, for God's sake. So we're up against some really tough competition, so we have to, get our story out because we think, I don't know if you know this, we're the first car in that category to get the new five-star crash rate. No, I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's big. That's big. I mean, I, there are a lot of, I know a lot of people trying to do that and that's nice that we got that. Uh, it's a large car in that segment. We're very proud of that. And with the Eco, it gets 42 miles per gallon. It's the most fuel efficient car in that segment. So honestly, we're very proud of all of that. Uh oh, we, you got another question. We've got oh, a couple more. A couple more questions. Cruise. Okay. Oh, whoops. Is it from my wife? Oh, where'd it go? <laughs> Oh, yeah. No. Are you coming home for dinner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe tonight, actually. Yeah. Uh, unless your wife's name is Bro 5A. No, I don't think so. Is Chevy going after the Ford Raptor? Uh, no, not not specifically. No, I don't think we have. I don't have any specific plans to do that. Okay. No. Legislative geek, you gotta love that name. How important is it to continue to spend money on marketing the performance of GM's vehicle line over, say, the economy of the cruise? Oh, I think, you know, we, what we have here is a, a lineup of cars from, from the Sonic, from the Volt, all the way to this heavy-duty pickup truck. And we have to look at them individually because those are, in, those are different target, micro-targets within that lineup. So we have to make sure we have a message that resonates to them, why they're buying it. The performance aspect that we have of the Corvette, 
to the fuel economy of the cruise, right? And now the nice thing is we have variants of the cruise. So if you want a, a higher end model that handles, but we're going to have that for you. If you want to dress up your Sonic, we have that for you. So you have to be relevant to each of these segments. I think I'm answering this question. I think yeah. that's the thing that's important, that you have a story to tell with each one of these under the halo of the Chevy brand. Actually, there's a follow-up to that, uh -oh. too. Which has, a, you know, or, which, which has a higher return on investment with consumers? Right now, you know, it, it changes, right? It depends on what the hot button is. I think with people going through the gas crisis of a couple of years ago, what they're sensing over Christmas, we do anticipate fuel efficiency to be a hot topic. We're going to spend some time on it in the Super Bowl. I mean, that's all relevant we think it is. I know some folks have said that good fuel economy in the public's mind also equates with quality. And engineering, mm -hmm. and quality, and dependability. So yeah, all of that. You want to keep walking? Okay. He, he, okay, we're going to wrap it up, but uh, one more question one more. here. Uh, Dcars wants to know, will GM expand the Corvette name into a brand selling multiple models? No, no, no. It's a, it's a Chevrolet model. It's one of our halos for this brand. We proudly put the uh, bow tie on there and can continue to do that forever. I mean, that is a part of what it is. It is a Chevy. That's great. That's great. Well, Joel, thanks so much for your hey, time. I know well, how I busy you are at this show. Fun. Yeah, and, no, and we'll <laughs> get you on Autoline After Hours with me and Peter, right, too. We'll do you. that. All It'll right. be excellent. Right, thanks so much, care, man. Bye -bye. That's great. Yeah, let's do, okay. let's do another. Got to thank our, our sponsor, Bridgestone. Uh, specifically, a shout-out to Bridgestone's America's Tire Operation. Bridgestone, in case you don't know it, it's the world's largest tire company with a full line of premium products. Check out Bridgestone's Eco RFT, the run-flat tire that offers performance, low rolling resistance, winter driving capability. When it comes to run-flat tires, it's Bridgestone or nothing. You can check it all out at BridgestoneTire.com. And here we go. Let's, let's see what else is going on. Here, let's move the camera over here. You see this big scrum going on. Look at everybody moving there. It's uh, the new governor of Michigan, Rick Snyder, walking with Mark Royce, uh, the president of Ford North America. And you can tell it's, it's quite the, the journalist scrum going on here. Oh, president of uh, GM, what did I say? Ford. Oh, geez, I can't say that. No, Mark Royce is the president of General Motors North America. But as you can see, that's part of what goes on at this show. Politicians show up and the media is all over them. But right over let's keep on walking here. Hi there. Hi, John. Maurice Cecil. Good hey, to see Maurice. you again. Yeah, good seeing you as well. Yeah, we, uh, I think we met down in Dearborn back uh, a year or two ago. You were in the IC headquarters. Yes, I was. Yeah, yeah taking so. a look at all the technology that you guys have there. You got it. So uh, we're going to walk over and well, take, a let's take a look at some look of the, the trends going on in the interior. Yeah, point these out for us. Okay. Now, this is uh, the Chevy Cruze. Right. And it's got a pretty nice interior to it. It's got a great interior to it. And one of the things we've seen in these class of, of cars really coming forward today is the improved craftsmanship and, and the attention to detail and fit and finish. So if you look at inside this car, it's a solid uh, it's a TPO instrument panel. Which means thermoplastic olefin. Do I have that right? You've got that oh, right. Thank goodness I passed the test. Olefin. And it's been soft touch painted. Where, where, the, where the consumer would touch it more, which is on the top here. So what you're taking is uh, a TPO, which is a what? Kind of a simple plastic, and then giving it a soft touch paint? You got it. You so, it. so you take something that's not that costly, but you make it feel really good. You got it. You make it feel really good in the areas where the consumer is touching it. And then what they've done is it's a real trend in the industry today is to see more wrapped products in the automobile. Explain that. What do you mean wrapped? Uh, it's a it's a plastic substrate that actually has a cloth or leather fabric wrapped over it with some sort of foam backing on it typically. And you'll see in the mid panel in the vehicle here across the mid panel you'll see that they actually have wrapped components on the inside. You'll now, see when, when you say wrapped, specifically you're talking like the A pillar of the car? I'm specifically talking in the mid panel oh, of really? the instrument panel where you look to the right above the glove box, uh -huh. where you see the register vent, right. that is a wrapped product. It's a compression bonded wrapped product. So it's got some compressibility. So in an area where the consumer is touching the vehicle a lot, mm -hmm. he will feel compressibility. He will see a, a real crafted interior because he'll know that it's wrapped and it's got a fabric type on it. 
It also, John, gives you great fit and finish if you look around the registers, because when you have a softer product, you can design for line-to-line for -line interference. So basically, you have zero gaps around the both. Is, is that what they call a crush fit? You got it. That's what's called a crush fit. Exactly. So instead of trying to, to put the register, as you say, or the vent, fit it perfectly in a hole, you just mash it in there, and, and you've got the fit. Not quite mashing yeah, yeah. it, but you designed to fit with some sense, some I know. semblance of interference. Yeah. But yes, right. it basically in concept, that's right. What else? What else? And, and be specific, because I think our viewers love being able to pick up on the specifics of what you're talking about so that they can learn exactly what you mean when you say that you're enhancing the interior. Well, and also when you look at in the interior of the center stack, you can see the appliques. And well, here, the let's open products. this door up. Yeah. And, and so if you look, they've, they've really got a... Uh, Design the, the center stack such that you've got a nice applique and where the fit finishes around the applique, you've got the soft products compressing against that. But one of the things uh, in, in the trends that we're looking at moving forward with is we've developed a new type of applique called our, our Deep Clear. And I, have a, I have a sample here I wanted to show you, which shows some of the things we see the trends in these vehicles going. Is so that, you've got a trim piece with what looks like some sort of wrapped rope or, or some sort of Yes, it, fiber. It, it's a uh, it's a picture of a of a wrapped rope or a fiber. We can do any type of picture. This allows for very quick customization, so it gives the interior designers a tremendous amount of flexibility in this type of segment vehicle where you can bring in any image you want, almost customize it. We could have one that said John McElroy on it. And you could have your car that has your name badged across the front of it. And this is a technology we're bringing to market, which is again, as I said, it's called our Deep Clear technology. Very interesting. So, and, go ahead. No, no, keep going. In, in another area in the interior of the vehicle uh, that, I, that I would tell you there's a lot of uh, focus on in these smaller vehicles, as you know, there's a lot of connectivity in the vehicle, Qu what we call quiet connectivity. There's a tremendous amount of effort put into NVH, acoustic characteristics inside the vehicle. And it's, it's an area where more and more in, the, in this entry level segment, this B and C segment, there's a lot more focus put on the flooring systems, the overhead systems, on what you can do there to eliminate noise coming from the outside, but also handle the noise on the inside of the vehicle. So not well. just make it look pretty, but also use it for noise attenuation. You got it. Use it for so it's more functional for the driver of the vehicle. And, and, and the passengers, if you're in a larger type vehicle, so the people in the rear seat can watch their television or whatever else they're doing in the back. So, so small cheap cars don't have to look cheap is what you're saying. Absolutely. They do not have to look cheap at all. We're seeing, you know, it's a very crowded segment. I think there's over 25 vehicles in this segment. So the OEMs are doing different things to really try to make their vehicles stand out. I mean, you look at the Fiesta vehicle, which has a foam in place instrument panel in it with, mm -hmm. a, with a PVC or a, a vinyl type covering on it and it's soft around it and the outstanding fit and finishes that it has along with the my touch system so you know so you get the acoustic value to it as well as having the the fit and finish inside the vehicle and Maurice what kind of difference do you see between what say customers in North America want versus Europe or Asia do you see big differences in that regard there is differences in what the in the customers by region this is a as you're probably well aware it's a global platform so this is one of GM's platforms been designed globally you'll notice there's more uh, there seems to be more room in this vehicle I think it's had in the past, but in different areas of the world, you know, and, and, and China is a great example where people spend a lot more time in the rear of the vehicle. So there's been a lot of attention in our operations over in China to what we can do to enhance the rear passenger compartment of the vehicle, either with more room, either with flip-up type workstations, different things for the occupant, because a lot of people over there have drivers. So you have, you have different parts of the world require have different demands in the vehicle. How about colors and things like that? What, what kind of trends are the design community asking you for in not just color but also uh, you know surface texture? Well there's a, there's a lot with haptics as we would call which is the texture of the surface of the vehicle. So We've worked on a lot of different things with materials to give a soft feel. I mean that's very important is not to feel that hard plastically but to have a soft feel on the interior. There's also a lot, as you can see in here, a lot of, of drive towards having uh, uh, two colors or having some color breakup. Uh, no, so they're not all black or all beige? Not all black, not all one color to give some definition and styling to the interior of the vehicle. Of course, back in the 50s, we saw some, and even the 60s, some wild fabrics and colors. Any, any thought that they might go back that way? Well, we're pushing it. We've shown a lot of wild 
designs and stuff through our deep clear really that really the studios are very interested in so I I think you're gonna see that you see my experience has been over in Europe they seem to be a little more uh, progressive in bringing some of those wild fabrics and and things into the vehicle what else was there anything Maybe else that we should I'll go give through you one other thing on, yeah on, please uh, on uh, it's another technology we launched over on, on the Honda Odyssey but it's called our twin shot technology which we're actually injecting two materials at one time. So what that gives you is, in the in the tool, you can get a one color on the top of the panel, one color on the bottom of the panel, all out of the tool. In one, one tool. Shot. One tool. Unbelievable. One shot. Not a and it's not some tool. sort of jagged line between the two. No. What you do, John, is you use either your your spears or your cluster or your center stack area to, to cover up these areas where we've designed the flow lines to come together. That's amazing though, so to it, shoot two different colors at the same time in a molding. Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was quite an undertaking and it launched this year and it's been very successful. And we see more of that really coming into the marketplace because it allows you to eliminate paint, which is good for the environment. And it, it allows you as well to bring in this color uh, mix or two colors without the added cost of a second tool or a second operation. Hey John, we've got a question oh. from the chat room. Okay, are OEMs looking to offer more colors than just black or taupe? We just answered that one. Yeah, they, they absolutely yes, yes, are. Yes, they are. Right. Yeah. We see a lot of black and taupe as we all know, <laughs> but there are other color options out there. You must be in, in heaven right now because there's more emphasis, I think, on interiors now than I've ever seen, but especially with the Detroit automakers who are far behind and really catching up right now. So you've got to be in a great position. Oh, it's, it's, it's actually uh, kind of rewarding to be on the interiors of the vehicle because I'll tell you back some years ago, there wasn't that focus and it seemed like things would get taken away from the interiors, but it's such a priority at our OEM customers today that we're actually looking at how we can even further enhance the interiors for their customers. What else are you trying to pitch them on that is not in production yet? Can you give us any hint of things to come here without maybe tipping your hand too much to the competition? Uh, well, I show, showed you the deep clear. We're doing some mm -hmm. other things with some uh, flooring and acoustics types of, of materials. We have a new Echo Blend material we're launching, which is a uh, it's a combination of, of kind of carpet off all, et cetera, into uh, a material, and, and we're doing a package tray or, and some other And Echo, obviously, there must be some sort of uh, environmental benefit to that then? Yeah, there is. Instead of filling up the landfill, you're taking that material and putting it into products that can go into the car and become a useful product. That's cool to hear that, you know, the, the interior of the vehicle is now getting recycled products as well. Ab absolutely. In fact, a lot of our resins we use recycled in the appropriate applications. Uh, throughout the interior of the vehicle. So we're using pop bottles and pop bottle lids and actually recycling our own resin and buying recycled resins on the market as much as possible. Again, keep out of landfill and, and keep, you know, keep putting it back into the automobile as much as we can. Great so. story, Maurice. Hey, thanks for your time today. Thank you very much. Really, really interesting. And I learned a few things here, too, of what to look for in interiors. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take everybody more on a, a tour of the show here. Hey, John, just got to know. He gets cornered like that, it's hard for him to get a shot. So maybe like twice that distance if you guys can back off a little bit. Go ahead. What do you want to do? The website? Uh, do the website as well. Okay. Time for another. Reminder of everybody who's making this webcast possible, we got to pay the bills, folks, and we really thank IAC, who we just interviewed. Check it out at IACgroup.com. Bridgestone, which is BridgestoneTire.com. Dow, check them out at DowBetamate.com and Hyundai. But instead of Hyundai.com, go to the Veloster, T H E V E L O S T E R.com, which is one of the concept cars that they've got at this show. Okay. Oh, let's go to Cadillac. So what you're seeing as we walk along here is a lot of the media is still here, but instead of running from press conference to press conference, what they're doing is catching up on interviews, going and shooting cars that maybe they never got a chance to shoot, while the whole craziness of press conferences were going on yesterday. And so you see a lot of car company people here, still media people trying to catch up on everything that's going on. 
Here we go, back over this way. Here's somebody else that we want to talk to. Hi, John. And we've caught up with Scott Atherton <laughs> from the American Le Mans series. Yes, yeah, good. ALMS. Indeed. So, Presented by Tequila Patron. There you go. Got to get that in, too. So, Scott, bring us up to speed. What all did you guys accomplish last year? It seems like you keep moving forward as far as racing series go. Yeah, I just, if you looked at every category of measure, whether it's uh, the car counts, you know, the number of cars entered in the races, the, uh, the addition of a new title sponsor in Tequila Patron, the fact that we had all four championships come down to the final laps of the last race, uh, record car, uh, record spectator counts, virtually every category at or above where we have had, you know, our, uh, our rankings. So couldn't be more pleased. That's terrific. You know, let's walk through the show as we talk here. Just stand on my right and we'll, we'll continue it. Uh, what's, what's up for 2011? I think we're going to pick up where we left off. We finished up at our Petit Le Mans event at Road Atlanta last October. Uh, we kick off our 2011 season in the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring in March. And this will be also another Intercontinental Le Mans Cup event, which is a new global championship that the ACO has, uh, has created. Um, when I say we'll pick up where we left off, I think we, again, are going to eclipse the car count numbers that we had before. You'll have the factory prototype Audis, the factory prototype Peugeots, Aston Martins, plus, in our category, the American Le Mans series, the GT car class is truly at a unprecedented level of professionalism and quality. Most people reference the Trans Am era of the 70s as being the absolute high water mark for GT racing in North America. I think for the first time, we have eclipsed that. You know, factory Porsches, factory Ferraris, factory Corvettes, BMWs, Jaguars, four GTs competing. We're gonna add- Listen to all the different Lambo. brands and the different manufacturers you're mentioning there. That's excellent. It's the show floor of the North American International Auto Show. <laughs> On the racetrack. As most of us would prefer to call it, the Detroit Auto Show. <laughs> yeah, that's what I call it. I, yeah, I had to put my plug in there for uh, Peter De La Rezo, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it, this show for us represents the most efficient two days of the year. Why, what do you mean? There is no place else we can go where you can literally walk up to CEOs, CMOs of every OEM that's competing with us, as well as those who are not yet racing with us, but we'd like to have them, and literally strike up a conversation. You know, the, the ability to have a direct contact face-to-face -face in an environment where everybody is open and ready, willing to talk about the things that we want to discuss. Of course, racing isn't priority one here, but... But the people that you need to reach are here. Absolutely, yeah. And they're here and they're accessible. And, and that's a, a unique combination because all of these folks are busy. Most of them work on a global scale. So to pin them down for a 30-minute meeting to talk about what our opportunities represent to them, could not ask for a better venue than this. So how about attendance? Talk about that and TV ratings and all that, because we've seen several other series, NASCAR notably, even Formula One, you see the coverage and it's just not as attended. How did you guys hold up in the last year? 2010 was the, the highest level of attendance that we've ever had. Um, and that literally defies gravity. Why? Why do you think that's uh, happening? I think it, it could be described as quickly as one word and that would be relevance. When you look at the cars and the technology that is showcased in the American Law Series, these are examples of cars that truly have not just their appearance based on a production car, but it is truly a production-based race car. And the technologies being developed in these cars are being developed in racing and then applied to the road-going version, the consumer-based product. So there's an identification that takes place here. When you see the Corvette, when you see the BMW, the Porsche, the Ferrari, whatever it may be, hey, I could buy that car or something very similar to it. It's not a silhouette. Our headlights actually work. Um, <laughs> They're not decals. <laughs> that, that's one reason that I think the, the, the relevant story applies at an unprecedented level in motorsport. If you combine that with the fact that we've been chipping away at it for 13 years, you know, we, we are in the best venues, in the best markets. We race at all the historic racetracks, Laguna Seca, Sebring, Road Atlanta, Road America, Mid-Ohio, 
We're also in the major markets with the Long Beach Grand Prix, a new event coming this year in Baltimore. So it's no one thing, but it's a collection of a lot of different details that have all come together to, to put us in the position we're in. We just announced a new TV package. Um, historically, we've been primarily on Speed Channel. For 2011, we are on ABC. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that's a free. big step up. It is. Not, not, not putting Speed down at all, but no. I mean, when you say ABC, wow. Yeah, ABC Network Television, four of our races will be on ABC. The balance will be on ESPN2. All of them will be streamed live on ESPN3. If you came out of the Consumer Electronics Show this week, the technology story of 2011 is going to be web TV. So I think we're ideally positioned for both addressing the highest quality television we could hope for right now, ABC and ESPN2, and certainly we're laying a cornerstone for the future with the ESPN3 content. That's terrific. That's great news. You I'm sure you can't wait for 2011 season to get started. I'm a kid on Christmas Eve, you're right. Yeah, I can't come fast enough. <laughs> and, and we here in Detroit hope, with the economy improving, with the local uh, automakers and whatnot, that you bring the ALMS back here to Detroit as well, because it was a great series. Funny you bring that up. I uh, had a very good conversation on that subject with Roger Penske, and probably more importantly with his lieutenant, Bud Danker. Mm -hmm. There is no question of the desire. Uh, you already nailed the, uh, the issue. The, the recovery of the industry and of course the economy here I think is the, the linchpin. There is no better venue for the American Le Mans series to be racing than in the Detroit area. They have such a fine venue out there on Belle Isle. Um, as I said to Roger and Bud both, you know, the minute that you need our assistance, don't hesitate, count us in. Well, you know, I don't have to tell you, Roger only does things first class and what he has done for the city of Detroit is uh, amazing. And when they had the ALMS races on the island, it was transformational. It looked beautiful, better than it ever has before. Yeah, I agree. You know, the Scott Fountain, you know, just being one symbolic uh, icon of what their involvement meant to the park and to the whole island, um, it belongs here. You know, if there was ever a market that deserves a race like that, the combination of us with IndyCar makes the ultimate weekend ticket. And, you know, the relevance and the OEM involvement that we have eight different manufacturers involved, four different tire companies. Um, as I said, if, when you think of what would be the perfect place for us to compete, right here. Detroit is it, and yeah. it's really cool for me to see how a racing venue can help improve a city. I agree with you. There's, uh, I remember when the announcement was first made about Roger and his group getting behind the Belle Isle event, and it's true, you know, the Super Bowl was a spectacular event for Detroit, but that's a one and done, you know, maybe you'll get it in 10 years or 20 years, whatever it may be. The event that was put on in Belle Isle could very easily and should be an annual event. So it brings the sports media focus onto the city. It highlights what has put Detroit on the map, literally and figuratively in the first place, the automobile. And in our case, the racing is exactly what it was originally intended to be. It's developing technology that just doesn't make for better race cars, but it makes for better road cars. It's improving the breed. That's what we're all about. The story doesn't get any better than that. I agree. <laughs> Scott, thanks so much for your time. Hey, really appreciate it. Well, we're going to take our tour a little bit more around the show, show the viewers what it's all appreciate about. appreciate the opportunity, and uh, I'm a regular viewer of your stream, and uh, I love what you do, keeping us all informed of what's going on up here. I live in Atlanta, so I'm uh, a bit removed from this market, but you guys do a great job. Let us know when you're in Detroit. We'd love to have you on After Hours. I'll hold you to it. Okay, good. Thanks, okay, Scott. thanks, Scott. Oh. Yeah, you bet. Okay, we've got to take another moment here for an ad spot. Let's just move just so they can see a little bit different of what's going on here. Um, all four ads. Oh my gosh. Okay, folks, let's start with Dow. We have to thank Dow Automotive for sponsoring this live webcast from the Detroit Auto Show. Dow Automotive, Automotive Systems offers Betamate structural adhesives, which offer improved body and white performance. And of course, the body and white is the basic structure of the car. Offers greater performance for the body and white and quality, improved crash performance characteristics, and weight reduction. Betamate allows increased design freedom, bonding, dissimilar substrates like aluminum, magnesium, composite materials. Specifically, it's designed for all aluminum bodies. 
aluminum closure panels, aluminum castings, composite body one in white parts, integration, magnesium suspension struts, seat structures, aluminum, and composite roofs. And of course, you can check it all out at dowbetamate.com. That's a lot. Even I'm learning things here. <laughs> uh, let's go back to... What? Okay. See that one right there? Skip the web one. Do hundred at the top. Oh yeah, and I think we're coming. We're we're standing in their booth. This is perfect. We have to thank Hyundai, and of course the big news here is the Veloster. The 2012 Veloster delivers innovation to the compact coupe segment with a unique third floor for easy rear seat access. Yeah, come on, let's show them. Let's not just talk about this thing. Let's show it to them. Hold on, folks. We're going to bring you more of an ad in just a moment. But first, let's show you the car that we're talking about here, because this is one of the wows of the show. So as I was saying, unique third door for easy rear seat access. Hyundai, and unique about it is, if you look at it, they've really hidden the door handle on this car. It's up in the upper left-hand corner of what you're looking at right now. You can see the door handle on, on the front door. Uh, but let's go back to what all is here. It includes Hyundai's Blue Link telematic system, Pandora internet radio, which I love. I, I can't wait to get Pandora in my car. Uh, seven inch touch screen display, a new 1.6 liter direct injected four cylinder engine made it to Hyundai's first dual clutch transmission, estimated 40 miles per gallon highway, better than the Honda CRZ hybrid. That's really saying something. Uh, and in fact, we'll, we'll get into it later, but uh, this car is pretty lightweight. Uh, also comes with Grace Note display technology, voice recognition, virtual CD download loading, AVI and MPEG video playback via USB, video game console, connectivity with 115 volt power outlet, hands-free Bluetooth phone system with voice recognition, and a standard Blue Link telematics platform. Check it all out at theveloster.com. Okay. Right in, and so here. right in the nose. And apropos of all that, we there have is. John Kraftcheck. How are you, John? Good to see you. Great seeing you too. CEO of Hyundai North America. You guys are having a wow of a show here. Yeah, um, our big announcement this year was the Veloster. You know, we've teased the Veloster for about 17 years now. <laughs> I know, because we've been using some of your teases on our daily no yeah, newscast. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think the industry was just about ready to see the car, and um, it, it does reflect this, this spirit of new thinking and new possibilities, as we say at Hyundai. We, we, we've, I think, broken a lot of rules in the automotive industry. For example, one of them that says, Cars need to be bilaterally symmetrical, you know, and we had some fun with that with the door configuration here. Whoa, 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 explain. What do you mean? Well, you know, it, when you think about it, John, every car inside is asymmetrical because the, the steering wheel's not in the middle. It's off to one side. But yet every exterior of every car, for the most part, with a few exceptions, is bilaterally symmetrical. The right is the same as the left. We thought, you know, with a car like this, it's a niche car aimed at Gen Y, we could take a little bit of risk. So why not give the driver the perfect door for the driver? And on the passenger side, the more social side of the car where friends and family may be getting in and out, let's give them two doors, but let's not put... Whoa, wait, 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 let, let, bring the camera, correct, yeah. bring the camera to the side. Yep. I didn't even pick up on that, so... Oh, on, John. I, the, Jeez. So there's only one door on the driver's side. That's right. It's, this is the perfect door for the driver. And, you know, it's just the right size. You can easily move the seat back back and get your gear in back if you had a, a briefcase or something to stow. But typically, people, passengers, are going to be getting it on the other side. So we thought, let's make that side have two doors. And, you know, the easiest thing for us to do with that would have been to make a suicide door. You right. Know, a rearward hinge door. Yep. Um, so we went out and talked to some former owners of, of cars with suicide doors, and, and we found all 17 people who bought the Saturn Ion <laughs> with those suicide doors. <laughs> and all 17 of them, to a man, said, don't do those doors again. It traps me in parking lots. I have to open up the first one first. So uh, we boldly went where no one has gone before with two forward hinged um, doors on this thing. So the rear door, you can see the door handle is uh, hidden in the uh, in the greenhouse itself. Gives you ready access with about a 90 degree opening right into that rear door. Oh my god! It's a first in a production car. So, and this will be out when? 
Uh, this summer. It's right around the oh corner. And the gosh. car, as you see it, is the production car. It's not a prototype in any way. Everything you see is production ready. It comes standard with our uh, Blue Link telematics system. Um, our vision at Hyundai is every car is going to be a note on the internet. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. Let's just all get used to it. Um, and this car in the Sonata, which uh, the, the 2012 model, will also come with standard uh, Blue Link when it comes out in May. So pricing more or less? About $17,000, oh, which geez. is a um, really well-equipped car, 1.6 liter direct injection. We're all over direct injection these days. Dual clutch. Dual clutch, um, although it comes with standard six-speed manual transmission. We'll have the manual available on all variants. Uh, standard 7-inch touchscreen, um, Bluetooth, very, very well-equipped car in typical Hyundai fashion for about 17 and change. Oh my gosh, fuel economy? 40 miles per gallon on the highway. Better than and, uh, the Honda CRZ, be. as we yeah, just mentioned it, in the ad. It, it may be, yeah, it may be, and uh, we haven't finished the city label yet, but yeah, it's going to be a great, really fuel-efficient car that's a blast to drive. One of the secrets to the car, uh, Colin Chapman would be pleased. 2,584 pounds. What? 2,500? 2,584. That pounds is lightweight. And at a $17,000 price point, it's almost unprecedented with this kind of interior volume. And, and one of the ways we're able to do it, John, is we've got our own steel plant at Hyundai now, and we've been cranking out steel now for a year and a half or and so. And this has got to be what? Ultra high strength steel? A lot of ultra high strength steel, a lot of Hyundai recipe steel that we can't get from conventional steel companies. And it's one of the reasons we've got this steel plant going now. It, now, what, 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 do you, what do you mean recipe steel? We have, I've never heard that term. We have 300 metallurgists and engineers whose only job is to take that steel plant and turn it into Hyundai cars that meet our aggressive weight reduction targets. We think it's the most cost efficient way to hit the, the new cafe regs and go beyond is through light weighting. But being Hyundai, we don't want to do it with magnesium and aluminum and expensive alternative um, of materials. So we're trying to do as much as we can with smart high strength steel application. In many cases, we're, we're inventing our own high strength steel formulations and running them through our steel plant. It's pretty a, cool. A lot of our viewers may not know that. You know, a lot of people think, oh, it's steel is steel. No, there are probably well over 200 different grades of steel on the market. Indeed. And in fact, I would dare say most cars even, probably in, have dozens an and dozens car. of different types of steel. That's right. And you're, you're prioritizing each steel for each individual application. So. <clears throat> That's why it's difficult in some cases to get steel companies to meet your demands. Um, with our own in-house steel plant, we can order up whatever we want, whatever we need for any application. Oh, I, I can't wait to drive it. That's it, all I can say. I cannot wait. That, with that kind of of lightweightness. It's got to have a pretty decent power to weight ratio. Yeah, it's got a good power to weight ratio. This car's still not about zero to 60 time. We still have Genesis Coupe. That's mm -hmm. our rear wheel drive, you know, flag waving sport coupe. This is is more fun, agile, nimble, but not zero to 60 time, not road Atlanta lap time, right? It's just a grin inducing car that you won't lose your license with if you're driving at nine tenths. Hey, while we're standing right next to it, you've you got bet. a concept car here yeah. too. In fact, one of the very few concept cars at the show. There aren't a whole a lot, lot of not, concept not a lot of concepts. Interesting. So tell us what this is. Okay, so you know, when we look at concept cars, I think it's important for everyone to realize it doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna do that car. The the clues that folks should get from concept cars is really more design direction. The architecture um, the way Here, the let's walk around move. it as we talk about yeah. it so the, the viewers can see right. the whole thing. So this car is the next um, iteration of what we call fluidic sculpture, which kind of started with Sonata. You've seen it on Elantra. Veloster's got a version of it. This is the latest innovation, um, an iteration of fluidic sculpture. It's an urban crossover um, body style. Um, chances are we're not going to build this car but we are going to put a car with sheet metal very much like this one into production. It's just going to be a different size and maybe a somewhat different body um, configuration. But it definitely gives you a sense of where Hyundai's going from a design direction. Let's keep walking so they can see the interior as well. You bet. And talk a bit about the paint because this is a, a trend that I see coming at the show where it's not a flat paint, right. but it's more a satin finish. It's, it's but there's no satin. depth of gloss. It's shiny, but there's no depth of gloss it's to really it. It's really interesting. Yeah, it has, it has a certain wetness um, to it. Because we have to change tape. Oh, we oh, have to change okay. tape. And I was really okay. about okay. to, oh, to uh, <laughs> get trapped in yeah. the water. Just go tumbling down and take John with me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have you, what have you seen? Uh,
with my kids. I, God, I thought that was genius because yeah. it's the soul right. made into a full-size minivan. It's the only way to make a Kia minivan. It makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, Ford Vertrek, which is the next escape. Yeah, somebody told me that was the most beautiful car at the show. Um, maybe, yeah. maybe. To me, it just looks like an updated Kuga. Yeah. So, which, okay. Which is quite. Nice. We're, we're back on. So they got the battery yeah. in. Okay. So let's go. Well, first, let the, we were talking about the paint. Yeah. You know, with that satin finish, is that something that you guys are really looking at? It's definitely at the leading edge, and honestly, we're not sure on consumer acceptance of this thing. But but the idea is a semi matte kind of finish, a satin mm. kind of finish provide some depth, inject some some metallic flake. It makes a very, very interesting look. We even we put one on our on our Veloster too in a medium gray tone. And showgoers like it. Um, we're testing it now to see. It's difficult and we worry about service. Mm. You know and how do you repair it? How do you repair the thing, right? Yeah. But, but for now it's it's perfect for a concept car. Um, <laughs> and, and we've gone really, really wild on the inside of this car as well. The other interesting thing about concepts is you can really take the exterior design and move it inside. So you really see that here. You also see a really cool interpretation of our Blue Link um, telematic system with a really great um, user interface. The focus was really simple touchpad, but that touchpad encompasses almost the whole dashboard, John, almost the whole center stack. And I so you can make it that much bigger. Pattern. Yeah, so, so very, very easy to use, big font, um, so you're not struggling to uh, read everything as you're driving. Cool, cool car. Hey, you've got the Elantra here too, yeah. and just in case, uh, any of our viewers have have missed that thing. Let, let's yeah, chat well, a little bit about the well, Elantra. Let's take, a, let's take a walk around. So you know, we ended up launching this car. Um, it's a little bit ahead of schedule. We've actually got a bit of retail sales uh, going in December. It's taking off in January, John. This one, all of our early metrics, the things we look at, like internet shopping, um, traffic to our website, building the car, and sending the quote to the dealer, is tracking faster than Sonata. Wow, because wow. Sonata was Sonata red hot. Sonata was breakout, right? Sonata was breakout for us. We did 196,000 last year. We did um, something on the order of 120,000, 130,000 Elantras in 2010. It looks like we're going to be able to increase that substantially. Um, and it's the same recipe as, as Sonata. It gives us some confidence. This fluidic sculpture styling, some people have told me they like the looks of this car better than Sonata. I think they both look great. I would never choose between the two of them. Um, but again, that 40 mile per gallon fuel economy estimate is great. It's got a segment up interior size, it's mid-sized interior. Um, I think it's going to surprise a lot of people because there's been a lot of focus on Cruise and Focus and Jetta. And I don't know that that many people have thought about the Elantra as a player in this segment. And I think it's going to do surprisingly well. I, I think you could be right. You know, because, you know, let's face it, Hyundai's perception amongst the public has been growing. Yeah. Maybe now it's Elantra's turn to catch up with that too. Yeah, exactly. Because Elantra's been in the lineup a long time and it's been known as a solid performer, but nothing you really aspired to own, you know? And and this thing I think from a design standpoint has that aspirational quality. It's got a killer fuel economy label and it's a blast to drive. I, I think it may uh, it may do some damage in the compact car segment this year. <laughs> oh, we've got some questions here. Sure thing. Let's see. Are we going to see a turbo Veloster? Oh my goodness gracious. That's we'll a good question. We'll certainly consider that. You know, we've got some turbo experience. Genesis Coupe is our primary focal point from a performance coupe point of view. So we like Veloster having this, you know, kind of eco-friendly uh, place. But hey, we never say never at Hyundai. We'll okay, we've been, turbo. we've been talking product, but yep. here's a question that says, as your vehicles improve, the dealer experience must improve as well. What are your plans going forward in terms of dealership sustainment and reinvestment? Do you have any plans for a North American dealership redesign? That is a great, great question. And, and I'll tell you why. Um, you know, there's been some controversy around our decision at Hyundai to launch Genesis and Equus within our Hyundai dealer network. Part of what we were doing with that strategy was bringing up the level of all Hyundai dealers so that they could sell Equus and Genesis well and therefore sell Accent and Santa Fe and Sonatas better, right? Um, when you think about it, when Honda, Nissan, 
and um, Toyota and Toyota started their upmarket franchises. They kept all of that learning in the premium franchises, and it didn't necessarily automatically flow through to their primary brands. The, the right? data backs you up. Yes, yeah. it does. And so maybe you know this, but in 2010, we vaulted from among the worst in the industry from a retail sales experience on the JD Power Sales Satisfaction Index to number one among all Asian brands. So in 2010, we passed Toyota, Nissan, and Honda in sales satisfaction. How did we do it? Genesis and Equus played a huge role. And we've had a lot of really investment efficient programs working with our dealer network, which I put up against any dealer network in the country. So what you mean is, as dealers. your dealers learn how to sell to a more upscale customer, i.e. buying Genesis or Equus, yes. they take those lessons learned it's, and apply it to everything else. It's cascading organically down to um, to all the models that we're seeing a, a great flow through. One great example, um, with Equus, we have this really innovative approach called Equus at your service, meaning it, whenever you need maintenance or any work done on your Equus, we'll come to your house and pick up the car. No kidding. you know. So it's not only free maintenance, it's we'll come get the car and give you a Genesis replacement vehicle. Um, a couple of our dealers said, you know, I really like this idea. So anyone in the family of that Equus owner will apply the same service to. So if the son buys a Santa Fe, they've got this extraordinary level of, of dealer service coming. It's really interesting. And it's one way to take the whole dealer network and use it as a strategic advantage for us. Um, and I think so far, early days, but working. Real good. Anything else that you want to get into here? Boy, John, I think you asked all the right uh, Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, John, thanks so much. Okay. Great having you take the time to walk us through the Hyundai display here. My Terrific. Pleasure. Thanks okay. for having me. Yeah, you bet. We'll see you around. Bye-bye. That away. Okay, here we go. Thanks, guys. John, be well. Take care. Uh, our chat room reminds us when you finish an interview to remind them who we were talking to. Oh, yeah, because some of them may have come in. Anyway, that was John Kraftcheck. He is the CEO of Hyundai North America. This is actually, he's one of the stars in the industry. Remember that name, Kraftcheck. You're going to hear this name for some years to come. And, uh, okay, so for, okay. Got to pay some bills here again. We want to thank the IAC group at IAC.com. Bridgestone at Bridgestone Tire. Hey, Bill, don't go away. We've got somebody else that we want to talk to here. BridgestoneTire.com, DowBetamate.com, and as you just saw, TheVeloster.com. Uh, remember that this live webcast is being brought to you by AA, IAC, a leading global supplier of automotive interior solutions and the only global supplier with a singular focus on interiors. J.D. Power shows that interior comfort is the second most important reason why people choose a vehicle and IAC recognizes that and makes solutions that make the vehicle safer, more comfortable and convenient for drivers and passengers. For example, the EcoBlend materials, made from recycled and natural materials, IAC's acoustical headliner, which reduces noise inside the car, their deep, clear, decorative trim with unlimited options for the kind of customization that you might want to do in an interior, and IAC's SafeTech technology that offers a turnable side impact module for the doors that help OEMs meet safety targets while saving the weight and cost. And those are just a few of the examples. Check it out at the IACgroup.com. And come here, I gotta say hello to a friend of mine here, Bill Burton. Hi, Mr. Radio. No, this guy knows more about radio than anybody in the country. Bill, what are you doing at an auto show, Mr. Radio? Uh, selling cars. <laughs> selling cars. Uh, we had a great program this morning, I believe, in Detroit, Dave Bing, all the people were there to up our city, we up our city, we sell more cars, right? Absolutely yeah, true. A fabulous kickoff of radio, TV, outdoor. Everybody is knocking themselves out. The big campaign been working on for about a year to make it a smashing success to help our town. So they'll get you one of these little pins here along the way. Okay. <laughs> Guys, hey, you're doing a fabulous job. Does he look great? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Great seeing you. We'll catch up with you later, too. Okay. Like I said, you never know who you're going to run into on the floor of the auto show here. Not just car people, but people who are in the radio business. Oh, one, one interesting thing here. Just sort of spray this Mopar display. I think this is the first time I remember seeing this at an auto show where Mopar 
has got its own display area along with Dodge and Ram and Chrysler and Jeep. Mopar, they're turning this into another brand for the company. Yes. So here, here's somebody else trying to get me for an interview, but I, I can't get to that right now. Hey, and it's Sandy Barua. Hey! Sandy, how you doing? John, great to see you. Great seeing you, too. We're, we're webcasting live here. So we have to tell everybody that Sandy's the, the head of the Detroit Re, Detroit Chamber Re, Detroit Region Chamber of Commerce. That's Did I get easy there? for you to say, yeah, John. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you doing at the auto show? I'm doing what everyone in Detroit is doing at the auto show, which is celebrating the great news coming out of our companies. I mean, this has been fantastic. The vibe has been fantastic. The num if I had a dime for every time I've heard Detroit is back, I wouldn't need my day job. <laughs> <laughs> That's great to hear. Anything that really caught your eye here on the floor of the show? Anything that really stands out? I think there's a couple things that, that caught out. One, I think the new Ford Explorer getting truck of the year I think is really important to Ford in terms of their marketing. I think that's key. The number and the quality of the small cars because, you know, right now, you know, everyone's kind of buying big cars now. We're seeing the trucks and the SUV is gaining in market share again. But, you know, a lot of folks are saying that we may be going back to 4 or $5 a gallon gas pretty soon here. And if that's the case, this time, the, De the Detroit manufacturers are armed and loaded and ready to go. Cars like the Buick Verano I think is going to be fantastic. That's a small car. That's a premium class car. Looks great. Uh, the new Ford Focus, you know, outstanding. It's, uh, it's a small car I'd happily buy. Um, you know, the Fiat Chrysler connection with the new Fiat 500 coming in. You know, the range that we're seeing now is absolutely fantastic. We now have truly a great car in every class for every pocket book at every size. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and that was unscripted. That's really good. <laughs> Sandy, we're, we got to move I, on. I, I learned from the best, John. Okay, that's cool. That's Have a great. great day. Yeah, that's great. And again, that was uh, Sandy Barua. He's the head of, and let me see if I can say it properly this time, the Detroit Region Chamber of Commerce. Whew, I don't know why I had such a problem getting